you ever have a hard time figuring out what the cost of something is? Maybe it's like you're in the flyer and it's like, uh, call for price and you know, uh, it's probably more than I can afford. Or, or maybe you're looking at a decision you want to make in your life and it's hard to say, well, what's the cost of this? We're going to think about that today on Now What Devotions from Trinity Lutheran and Cyrus. So I went out for a bike ride this morning. You can see I got hotter than I expected. So uh, that, that sure is trying out. And here we are sitting at the park, just uh, resting the breeze a little bit. And I'm thinking about our text for the week. Uh, this is from the book of Luke. Uh, we are in chapter nine. And Jesus is has set his face towards Jerusalem. That means he's decided this is where I'm going. This is my purpose. This is my, my mission and my direction. He's traded a course. And when he charts that course, a lot of other things fall in place around him. Um, and so what we have today is this series of rejections uh, of Jesus. And the more I read this and look at it, the more I think it's about people misjudging costs and misjudging um, costs and benefits and also misjudging reality and falsehood. So the text starts, Jesus goes to visit a Samaritan village. Now, recognize um, he may have already visited the Samaritan village in the past, but this time he gets there and they go, yeah, we don't want you to come in. You, you just stay out. Even though folks know who he is, even though he is Jesus, <laughs> right? He's, he's done some pretty amazing things. Um, the folks in that area say, you're headed to Jerusalem. We don't want to be associated with you because the pain will come down hard on us too. They make a cost benefit analysis and they say, it's too risky. It's too risky to have you in town. Just stay out. Um, yeah. And they miss the point. And then the same thing happens again. Um, some different folks ask, he says, come follow me. Or another one says, I'm going to follow you. Right? Uh, and three of these folks um, all say they want to come with them, but they have other things to get done first. And again, he, he points out to them, I think you're missing the reality here. Your, your cost benefit analysis is off. <laughs> um, and even his disciples, when the Samaritan village rejects him, they say, should we burn the place to the ground? Let's call down holy fire. And remember, they were just saying, well, who's the greatest? Who's the worst beforehand? Um, and again, they miss the cost uh, of what that would do to them, let alone to the mission, let alone to those people, let alone to God's heart, right? That there's all these missing uh, of benefits and costs. My wife this morning brought in some of the first harvests uh, from the garden, brought me some sugar snap peas, and oh, they were so good. Uh, and I thought about all the effort that went into that and the time, and I value, she values something fresh that we grow ourselves. That cost is outlined and, and set aside when you think the benefit is so much greater on something fresh and delicious. Uh, same thing with like the gardens out here. Uh, I'm out the West Central Experiment Station. I've been out here a number of times. Sorry, I just like it out here. So sometimes you get videos from here. But you look at these gardens and what's the cost here? What's the benefit? Um, people have that question often about scientific research, right? Like, why are we sending things to space when there's people on Earth who need food? Uh, that's not a wrong thought. Absolutely not. Um, I think the problem is, is you're missing, um, we, we tend to miss what the benefits are, right? Um, sending people to space is also what led to computers, is also what led to the greatest boom in production information and uh, wealth and uh, health of the human race in the history of all time. But that didn't really feel like, oh, if we send people to space, we'll have an internet, right? That's not a direct line that you can draw but it is, right? How, you can't do a cost benefit in that situation when you don't know the benefits of the outcome. And I think Jesus is talking about that too. Same thing here in a garden, um, a place for people to come out and rest, a place for people to see beauty, a place to, to, to practice and see what can be made uh, takes intense planning and time and effort. And I'm sure there are plenty who say the cost is not worth this. But gosh, it's been a benefit to me personally. I know it's been a benefit to the community. It's been a benefit to our larger, wider community. People come in, um, tourists come in. They have the big exposition out here each year. I mean, those things have significant benefits. When you look at the larger picture, it's well worth the effort. But it might not seem like it. I think uh, that's precisely what's happening here in our text today. Um, Jesus says, I'm going to Jerusalem. And if I go to Jerusalem, I will die. But I will rise again. What's the benefit there? Uh, the saving of all humanity. Uh, eternity, 
right? And some of these folks that he asks to follow with him, they say, well, I, I got to go take care of this thing first. And he says, no, 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 no. I am the son of God. I am here now. This is your moment. This is your time. Take advantage of it. If you miss it, you will have missed it. And all of history will look and say, that guy missed it, <laughs> right? Um, same thing with if I do not go to Jerusalem, what will happen? Um, is the price of a short amount of suffering and the death of one for all uh, worth the benefit of eternity and forgiveness and blessing for all? Oh yeah, 100%. And he seems to know that, but the people around him don't. Do we? What's the, what's the benefit of a life lived in faith? What's the benefit of forgiving someone who has wronged you? What's the benefit of withholding harsh words or learning to forgive? Well, it seems like the benefit in the immediate ain't too great or else everyone would do it, right? But in the eternal, in the long run, when our hearts and minds and souls are changed and we are brought into that image of Christ, when there is an eternity for us, then the benefit is a, it's a no-brainer. Either you got nothing or you got everything. That's an easy decision. I'm Pastor Chris from Trinity Lutheran out here at the park thinking about what's the cost? Is it worth following? Of course, I would say yes, but then again, <laughs> maybe I'm a little biased. What do you think? Is it worth following? Have you thought about that? Have you organized your life? I'm signing off for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.